the three Virgin Islands tax-free, duty-free ports. Puerto Rico? Well, they tax those two million Puerto Ricanians out to the max, yeah. And uh, Tennyson, yeah, he's a well-seasoned pirate, although he does shower regularly, and uh, he knows every detail, every angle to exploit this difference. Yeah, he works... He works the border. He works the gap. Yeah, and this way, Tennyson, anytime he wishes, is guaranteed a 100% free round trip to the hippie haven in the Virgin Islands by doing the inter-island cigarette alcohol run. Well, simply known as the St. Thomas cigarette run. And, uh, yeah, besides the extra pocket money, an adventure, the fun of it, you know, it change his head, get a break. Uh, like he said, at the catamaran, you know, he needs a vacation, so. Uh, and it, it, he always is guaranteed a free place to stay at the Hippie Haven, because at the Hippie Haven, He's celebrated. He's a star. He's a modern-day buccaneer. And, uh, well, let me explain how this works, this St. Thomas cigarette run. Uh, first of all, why are the Virgin Islands duty-free? Mm -hmm. To lure in the extraordinary lucrative cruise ship business, yeah. If you're downtown and there's two or three cruise ships in Charlotte Amelie Bay and they let them out, you got 45 minutes. This is just a quick, you want some, some good, good duty-free uh, alcohol, go for it. And get back to the ship. Well, uh, these uh, mass trash, middle-class uh, tourist horse, you got to actually wear shoulder pads and a helmet. To be safe, the streets are so packed. You, you you're walking off the curb. You get mercilessly pressed back against the jewelry shop's retaining wall. They take over the streets. You know that bull run in Papalona? That's an easier gig to survive than this. Well. Tennyson's got his shoulder pads and a helmet. He's going for a touchdown. He's going for 10 cartons of Paul Mall, extra filter. You can, you can get a carton of them. 20, you know, $2 for a carton of the world's most cancer-causing death sticks you can get your hands on. We're talking 20 cents a pack. Oh, you get those back to Puerto Rico? Where they're you got to have a government tax stamp on each carton. They're three times more expensive in Puerto Rico. And Tennyson gets 10 cartons. Well, whatever the orders are, because he's supplying the bars. <laughs> it holds that one. Whatever they order. All right, three cartons of Paul Mall. Okay, some... Some lucky strikes, you want some camels, you want some, you know, bents and hedges, you want some menthol, whatever. Yeah, he's got a he's got a shopping list. Then you can also get, you know, like four fifths of premium alcohol. Good stuff. We're not talking Johnny Walker, okay? You want some French cognac? Grand Marnet? Hey. Well, um, everything's legal. There's no risk. Uh, I mean, anybody. You got a pulse? You can walk? You can survive a life stettening uh, stampede over your ass and still get up after that? Crazy cruise ship mobs, huh? Well, when he's back in Puerto Rico, there's so many bars in old San Juan. He knows all the 
bartenders and they it's ordered it's all pre-arranged he drops off the cartons and then the bar owners they put those under the you know behind the counter because it's illegal selling non-tax cigarettes huh to their vip customers and their favorite horse hey have a pack honey just cost him huh? well it cost him 40 cents Tennyson makes his cut. Huh? Look at bottom line. Tennyson goes over St. Thomas cigarette run. He makes a hundred dollars. That pays round trip on a goose. That's seventy bucks. And he makes a sandwich for the day. And uh, in St. Thomas, he's always got that free place to stay because not only him, but all hippies in the Caribbean have a free place to stay. Yeah. Hippie Haven? Well, let's let's talk about the Hippie Haven. It's a Danish mansion. And, uh, yeah, it's three stories, wooden. It's, it's gorgeous. Uh, uh, right, uh, off the bay side of Charlotte Amelie. I mean, it's less than a minute by foot from the Charming Bay, Charlotte Amelie. Oh, picture, postcard, Caribbean port. Oh, named after the voluptuous mistress of uh, King Christian of Copenhagen. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, off St. Thomas, about 50,000 people. Oh, it's about 30 miles wide, uh, top to bottom, 12 miles. It's a nice ridge going over the top. Like I said, it makes it picturesque. Lots of, you know, curvy road getting up. And then you look down at the beautiful white sand beaches on the other side. And uh, Christopher Columbus discovered, uh, uh, for the Europeans, uh, St. Thomas in 1493. Uh, the natives, well, they already knew they existed. Well, you just ask their moms, huh? And uh, a Dutch established the first European settlement. I mean, Christopher Columbus was like, oh, I discovered St. Thomas. It's like a hit and run explorer. It's just like have a few Coco Frios, bring some rum on board. And it was like a discovery freak. Well, the Dutch, they settled uh, there, uh, but these founding burghers became impossible burghers because the singing fire ants, they got centipedes as long as your hand, the humidity, they're off to New York. They got a lot of chili dog climate up there in the north, huh? Well, okay, 17th, 18th century, the whole Caribbean swarming with sweating, swarthy pirates. And they got these extendable telescopes looking for freshwater waterfall. And oh, our, our colonial nationalistic ships. Yeah, those ships, huh? The bellies in those ships, bloated. Gold bars silver bars and they're trying to get them back to the kings and queens of Europe huh? but the pirates they have other ideas and they're free they're not aligned to any nation so let's just 